Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to our live stream. Uh, uh, thank you everybody wherever you're from. Thanks for joining us. Um, in case you are not aware of who we are, uh, our community is called ACE. ACE is a community of machine learning practitioners and researchers who have gathered around topics in AI research, engineering, and products. We host free live sessions like this five, three to five times a week and produce premium content in various subject areas. To see more, visit ai.science. And, and uh, to get slides of these talks and the video recordings, also visit our website. Also, make sure to subscribe to YouTube channel ML Papers Explained to get notified about all the live sessions and other free content we publish. We currently have around 17 different streams, ranging from NLP, uh, graph, machine learning, uh, 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 machine learning, ML in economics and it in different areas, and feel, fr feel free to check them out. Today, uh, we are honored to have uh, Mr. Yan Liu from Amazon. Uh, Yan is a machine learning scientist uh, focusing on product catalog quality improvement. He has previously worked as a data scientist at a metadata request and holds a PhD in information science. Uh, hello, Yan, and thanks for joining us. Hi, thanks, Xi'an. Um, it's my pleasure to give a talk today. And um, yeah, Xi'an and I is a longtime friend from middle school. It's uh, really nice to um, talk to old friend and now today have a chance to talk to new friends here um, in uh, the community. So today I would like to uh, share a recent study uh, with my colleagues in Amazon for a uh, price consistency regarding pack size via product variant retrieval and pack size extraction. So, um, so this is uh, the work that I did uh, in my previous team in pricing. And it's a relatively uh, application-wise uh, work that used uh, recent NLP and information retrieval technologies to help solve uh, real-world uh, e-commerce problems. Um, so this paper was published in the uh, uh, WWW uh, ECNLP workshop uh, recently. And um, so, yeah, let's get started. Um, now first, I would like to explain what do I mean by product variant and price consistency. By product variant, I mean the same type of product that only varies by a minor attribute. Uh, for example, for a pair of shoes, we say that the same shoes, uh, but with different color combinations or sizes, uh, those are product variants to each other. Or for the product that's, that are sold with different package sizes, uh, we say that the same product, but that are packaged in different sizes are size uh, product variants. And uh, as, uh, as a customer, we normally expect some price relationship between those product variants. For example, for the same pair of shoes, uh, we expect that uh, the same pair of shoes with, uh, with different sizes to have exact same price. And for the products in different uh, size packaging, we normally would expect uh, something called a quantity discount when we buy a, a large size. Um, and, but this is not always the case. Um, as we can see, here's a picture uh, taken in a brick and mortar uh, grocery store that um, a so-called value pack of two bottles of bathroom cleaners actually has a higher price than twice of the price of the single bottle. And this situation actually happens more frequently for online retailers. And here's an example of a screenshot of an online retail website that um, you can see that the full pack of Coke is actually has a larger unit price, uh, like $4.25 for each pack, which is more expensive than a single pack. And um, you may be wondering why it is so difficult for both the online and offline retailers to keep uh, keep those prices price relationships consistent with the customer's expectation. Well, for especially for online retailers, um, big online retailers um, 
sometimes carry a large number of products, uh, as, as many as uh, millions or billions of products. And they have new, uh, lots of new products coming to their catalog every day. So maintaining such uh, product catalog information is extremely hard. And in our case, to get the price relationship correct for the pro product variant uh, differing different packs, package sizes, we need two kinds of catalog information. Uh, one is the product variation relationship between different uh, products. And then we also need to know the product size information for each product. And beyond that, we also would like to, we need to have a um, good quantity discount for different kinds of product, which for a, a single online retailer, it is hard to maintain those uh, optimi optimized uh, quantity discount factor for different kinds of products. And um, before we jump in uh, to our solution, we first would like to first uh, define uh, two metrics that we would like to measure the uh, how how price how prices are inconsistent. So here we want to measure two type of inconsistency. The first type is that uh, we want we want to measure whether the product with a smaller size um, has even smaller unit price than the product with the larger pack size. And for the second type, um, we want to measure whether the product with larger pack size actually has an even lower total price than the product with a smaller size. So here we want to identify those two kinds of price inconsistency. And here is a, um, a summary of our uh, pipeline uh, of our pipeline and I I will go into details of each of the components one by one so first uh, given a query product uh, we first would like to know whether this product is sold by size or volume so we can so actually uh, it makes sense to compare the unit price and so here we train a size binary classifier using the uh, tax classifier using the uh, uh, product title information. We use BERT to generate uh, embedding vector uh, by using, by taking the input of the product title. And we took, and we take the uh, uh, embedding vector and feed into a binary classification layer. And for this, uh, we treat it as a supervised learning task and we use some kind of so-called distance supervised uh, method that we use the existing catalog data instead of ask human to manually label such data, which will cost uh, lots uh, of time and money. And because we have catalog data that some products uh, has the attribute size available, and we use those kinds of products as positive examples. For negative examples, um, we can choose the products that don't have such attributes, but sometimes it's not because this, these products are, are not sold by size, simply because the attribute is missing. So just want to make sure we also uh, filter by using some heuristics that there's no uh, obvious size related keywords in the title. And uh, we trained the classifier and the performance is pretty good. Uh, the accuracy on the holdout data set is 97%. And after we determine that if the query product is sold by size, um, we, we uh, put it in our uh, internally built product-to-product uh, -product search engine. So this search engine is also built by uh, my team that we, uh, it is different from traditional uh, IR that we uh, use a query to search for products instead here we, we, the query is actually a product and the search engine will give us the most similar one uh, like a normal search engine did. And so this, uh, this is, uh, is a, a, I won't talk about the details of this uh, search engine. And if you're interested, you can refer to uh, our paper um, uh, last year uh, published uh, by uh, my colleague Chu. So basically, we used a um, 
uh, semantic hashing on the uh, uh, attention-based uh, uh, text vector extraction method. And so after we uh, query this uh, product in our product-to-product -product search engine, it will return a list, a rank list of the most similar products to us. And for each of those top ranked products, we would like to understand whether the similar product is, a, is actually a product variant to our query product. And to do this, we trained a, a Siamese type of neural network. So basically, we have a pair of products. One is our query product, and the other one is one of the top ranked most similar product. We take the product titles of both products and use a LSTM module with attention to extract a vector from the product titles. And after the, uh, we extract the vectors, we compare the feature difference and added another fully connected layer to, to, uh, to determine whether the pair of products are product variant to each other or not. And after that, we have a list of the of the product variants to our query product, and we now we need to extract the size information from again using the product title information. And for this task, we treat it as a. Um, sorry, could you sorry could you elaborate more a bit about what what do you mean by size information? Is it, is it a number that you're trying to extract? Yes. OK. So so basically, um, here I will give an example. OK. So here's a product, um, mineral water. And so basically, we are interested in the total size of that product. And here we can see that um, it says 16.9 uh, fluid ounce per bottle. And in this uh, package, it has total of 24 count. So our final uh, output would be 16.9 uh, times 24. And we also are interested in the unit because sometimes uh, the title says fluid on, sometimes set a pound. So we need to uh, have a standard uh, unit to compare different uh, price, uh, price per unit for different products. So, so for this task, we need to uh, first uh, extract the total um, size of the product and also the the unit it uses in the title so those kinds of uh, two kinds of information so but, can i interpret yeah. the 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 final step of extracting unit as probably i can imagine something like uh, the the word immediately after uh, the the size that it extracted something yes similar. exactly okay right right yeah so for the unit extraction we basically use the regular expression to extract it instead of, um, because it will take, uh, if, I, if we, again, treat the unit as the, uh, another entity, we uh, also need more additional training data, which is uh, very sparse in our uh, catalog. But uh, using a regular expression is actually uh, yields uh, very good results in our uh, experiment data set. OK, gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so basically, um, we did this by uh, using this uh, named entity recognition uh, framework that uh, we want to identify two kinds of entities. One is the, the single size, which is for each of the um, single unit in the package, um, what would be the size? And also, how many of those units are uh, packaged uh, together in this, uh, in this product? And for our final output, we will uh, combine those two and output the total size. And to solve this problem, uh, we leverage the uh, existing uh, one of the state-of-the-art uh, method, uh, which is proposed by Ma et al. Uh, in 2016. Uh, it basically uh, uses a bidirectional uh, LSTM um, with a convolutional neural network. And finally, with adding a uh, conditional random field uh, layer. So it's one of the most popular and uh, uh, very good performance uh, framework that used uh, widely um, 
inside uh, in academia and industry. And um, again, here we use the catalog data as training data. Um, so here I can uh, say more about it because this one, this uh, case is a little bit tricky. Uh, so basically what we did is that uh, we look at this product in our catalog. Our catalog also has uh, those two types of information uh, stored, and but not, they are not necessarily correct. So what we do is to is to match those uh, numerical values in our database uh, with the bot, with the title. If those two numbers matches, we have a high confidence that um, that this is uh, the correct size. And uh, also for this in this case, um, because the way we generate a positive example in our first version of this uh, name identity recognition model. It always predicts numbers as a positive, uh, either single size or pack count label. So we need to add additional negative labels, but our numbers uh, in our training set. For example, in our product title, there are numbers can be um, like the, uh, the the value of a, a nutrition fact, uh, or can be a number of uh, like for diaper. Diapers, uh, it can be like uh, phase one or phase two, those kinds of numbers. So we, we added some uh, negative examples uh, manually to make sure our model can distinguish those uh, false positive uh, number uh, uh, cases. And so, so basically using these two models, we significantly filling the missing attributes from the catalog. And um, in our experiment data set, the catalog only contains uh, only one third of the variation relationship between the products in our experiment data set. But our model uh, was able to identify 80% of them ha actually has a product variation relationship. And for the size attributes and um, we can see that um, our model actually decreased the missing rate by a number of magnitude from uh, like for the number of packages is from uh, thousands and tens of thousands to only around 300. And for the pack size, it decreased from 2000 to about uh, 300. So it fills the missing uh, catalog attributes significantly and it helps um, us to better uh, understand the actual situation um, from the published prices. And after we got the both the uh, product price relationship and unit and the pack size, we are able to uh, compare the unit price between different size variants of the same product. So here, for each group of product variants, we fit it into a uh, regression model. And namely, we, we use the uh, total quantity as a, the uh, independent variable to predict the unit price. So here, we train different regression models for different products instead of training one regression model is that our, we assume that different products will have different kinds of quantity discount factor. Um, that we would like to optimize for. So, um, so here, because we have the assumption that the uh, product with larger total quantity will have a lower unit price. So we add a monotonically decreasing constraint on our regression models. And we tried uh, three kinds of regression uh, models, uh, namely linear regression, exponential regression, and isotonic regression. So here's an example of how uh, these three kinds of uh, regression models perform on a real example of unit prices and pack, pack sizes. Um, so here, um, I also uh, show two examples of the end-to-end -end results of our framework. Um, so in the first case, um, the query product A, um, has this title, uh, product A 3.4 pounds. And 
Um, so our uh, we first identify two of the uh, its product size variants, uh, but with different pack sizes. Uh, one is uh, 3.5 ounce with pack of three, and the other one is 3.5 ounce. And we can see that uh, so so it, it all has different kinds of uh, format and spelling about the 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 product sizes. It's very hard for if you only use regular expression or some uh, heuristic, it's hard to uh, correctly extract the pack, package sizes. And then we uh, we normalize the the total size to the same using the same unit ounce here. So we can see that the first one will have uh, 54.4 ounce, and the rest two one has uh, 10.5 and 3.5 ounce. And then we are able to uh, calculate the posted unit price for each of the product. And for this case, it actually uh, breaks the uh, the second type of price consistency that we can see the query product actually is uh, has a large pack size, but it's actually uh, less expensive than the second uh, second product, which has a much less quantity but higher price. Um, so here we also show the uh, MSRP, uh, which stands for Merchant Suggested Retail Price. Um, so our assumption is that the merchant themselves has a better sense of how to price those items and how and what will be a realistic quantity discount for them. So here we want to have this MSRP as a reference to see uh, how our uh, regression model actually can fix the issue. So we can see that uh, our our regression model uh, regression model su um, suggested that the query product should be priced at around uh, thirty five dollars, uh, which is much closer to the MSRP, and it's uh, very far from the actual posted price. And in the second case, um, we did the same process. And it, for this one, it actually uh, breaks the uh, first price consistency that uh, we can see that uh, the, the query product, which is uh, 84 uh, ounce, that has a posted uh, price per unit, uh, 0.32, which is higher than the second product, uh, which has a smaller size. So the, so the larger pack size actually has a larger unit price, which uh, is counterintuitive for consumers. And uh, uh, it will lead very bad customer experience. And again, after the, the, the regression output is much closer to the MSRP than the actually posted web, 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 web price. Um, so for all of our data set, uh, we calculate the uh, summarize the aggregated price inconsistency matrix that we defined uh, in our previous slide. We find that uh, using uh, different kinds of regression models, we are able to reduce the uh, price consistency matrix significantly. And for the first type, the exponential regression actually uh, does best. And for the second type, the isotonic uh, regression were able to uh, reduce the price inconsistency uh, close to uh, like uh, 70, 60 to 70 percent. Um, Sorry, could you what uh, what are the uh, what are these percentage mean in the tables? Yeah, so this is actually calculated using this uh, this formula that we define. Oh, the so, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, so we actually compare the uh, the difference uh, between um, the actual uh, consistent price from the mm -hmm. posted web uh, posted uh, website price. So if there is a, a difference, yeah, we s summarize it and uh, the average. So so the bigger the inconsistency, the the larger the percentage, essentially. Yes. Okay. Right. Other is worse. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. To conclude my talk. Um. So it is actually 
very a uh, very challenging task to maintain price consistency um, because of the missing and noisy catalog information. And here we propose a three-step method to identify those price inconsistency and provide price signals to mitigate such issues. And also as a side product, uh, our method uh, produces high accuracy machine learning models to enrich catalog information, which are beneficial to a lot of other downstream tasks uh, inside the uh, e-commerce uh, platform. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's concludes my talk. Thank you. Okay, th thank you. Um, so to I guess there's a lot of moving pieces in the in your pipeline, so it's it's um, mm -hmm. in different stages. Could you uh, just briefly just summarize like what so um, what, like how how do how do how does um, the information uh, go from one pipeline to the other? Just a quick uh, summary, sure. overall summary. Yes. Yeah, so I think, um, memory. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we can look at this, uh, this uh, figure. And here we use these uh, brackets to separate the, uh, the whole uh, pipeline into three, three steps. Uh, the first step is called a reference product retrieval that given a uh, query product, we first determine whether it's sold by size or not. And if it is uh, indeed sold by size, we uh, query it in our product to product search engine, mm -hmm. which will return a list of uh, candidate products which are similar to our query product, but are not necessarily product variant. And then for each of those candidates, uh, we use our variant detector to determine whether they are size variant of our query product. Mm -hmm. And for the positive ones, and uh, we further use the uh, uh, named entity recognition task uh, models to extract its size information and compare it with our uh, reference product, uh, the, the query product. So we got the size and the price per unit from all those, uh, both the query products and its variants. We feed all those information into a regression model. Okay. And finally, got the uh, the crack hit, uh suggested price. Okay, um, I, I guess uh, my first question would be: um, so uh, for for each of these pipelines in each different stages, uh, mm -hmm. there uh, and I I I saw that you have a, a fairly high accuracy, but there there's probably some some error in like outputs that coming out of from each of these uh, pipelines. And yes. then it could propagate to, to the next next stage, right? Right. So how do you is there a way to eliminate those uh, like like maybe obviously wrong answers like from from, right. from the from these uh, uh from the process? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Um so so I mentioned in the paper but didn't uh, mention it in the slides that for each regression we actually look at the uh, um the uh, mean squared error of that regression. Because if there's um, error in the previous uh, upstream uh, stages, uh, the size can be uh, far from the, the actual size. And that will give a very uh, kind of outlier prediction of the price per unit. And the regression model will be very hard to fit on those data points. And for uh, in that case, we look at the distribution of the mean square error of all of our, our regressions mm -hmm. and took out the outliers um, from that step. So actually, uh, we took out about 16% of those uh, uh, regression models. And we think it's because of the upstream uh, errors that propagated to that stage. OK, OK, that's yes. So mm -hmm. um, could you go to the... Um... I think for 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 size information extraction, I I don't remember which, which slide that was. Yeah, size. Yes, I think that one. So you mentioned um, so for positive examples, um, these are uh basically extracted from a predefined catalog, right? 
Uh, but for negative examples, I'm wondering. Uh, my understanding is that you kind of ra- almost kind of randomly sample um, titles that have numbers, but those numbers you are sure that they are not uh, units of measurement, so, such as ounces. Uh, right. Yes. Um, so mm-hmm. yeah. So so basically, um, this kind of. Uh, Negative examples is a little bit different from the sen- from the sense of classification, because it's uh, for the name entity recognition task for this part. Like for even for the the example I gave here, uh, those like those words like water and FL and O O Z are all um, kind of negative examples comparing to sixteen point nine and twenty four. But uh, here, what I mean by negative example is that. Uh, um, kind of false positive predictions of those single size and pack count from our uh, the preliminary version of our model, and um, so we did a uh, error analysis of those uh, cases and found out most of them are because of they are numbers uh, and our training mo- the previous training batch are very biased towards uh, if they are numbers uh, they are one hundred percent. Uh, correct labels. Mm-hmm. So our model is simply uh, put too much weight on the numerical form of those uh, uh, words. So that's why we want to get some uh, uh, wrong, uh, numbers but are not actually describing sizes. Okay, so in other words, ne- meaningful negative examples. Anyway. Yes, yes. Um, then I'm curious, like, in the paper, you mentioned the way you uh, construct those is you explicitly uh, look for words like, say, if it's one ounce, two ounces, then you know that's probably a not a negative example you're looking for. So so mm-hmm. y- are you sort of detecting the absence of maybe a set of units of measurement? Is is that how you find the negative examples? Um. So so we basically... The uh, the pr- the process is basically we first uh, run our model and um, on a sample of uh, product titles, mm-hmm. and we look at the uh, uh, the results and find some typical pattern of negative cases and uh, summarize that um, and try to look for even more because like previously. Uh, I mentioned that uh, a common case is from the numbers that are describing the amount of nutrition mm-hmm. contained in the product. Mm-hmm. So I just um, sample products from those kind of uh, products that uh, likely have a nutrition facts mentioned in the product. Oh, okay. Uh, so it's yeah, sort of so... like a semi-manual process. Right, right, right. Okay. Okay, I see, I see. Um, so I guess th- this is a dumb question because I'm, I'm not um, entirely familiar with with a in the field but you uh in order to detect to 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 detect the product variant i think that's on another slide uh, mm-hmm. you use a siamese model um right so i guess the i guess my question is like a dumb question is like uh, if you just apply a bird model here would, would it also work uh yeah so i think um the, uh, the reason we choose this structure is that um, it is kind of a uh, straightforward uh, structure t- for pairwise uh, classification, ta- mm-hmm. classification mm-hmm. tasks. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, so it's kind of uh, most straight, uh, the first model you would think of. And um, as okay. re- with respect to BERT, uh, I think uh, we can actually apply BERT here to extract the features, not necessarily using LSTM and tension. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, so one thing is that uh, in the, the work we did, when we did this work, uh, we still, the uh, BERT was just uh, developed at that time. And uh, uh, okay. we only got a pre-trained uh, BERT model from Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is uh, the the corpus is significantly different from product titles and descriptions, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and um, and we did not have time and resources to train a uh, Amazon tuned version of pre-trained of Bert to get its performance uh, as good as those uh, more uh, 
specified like uh, trained uh, in infrastructure in our case. Mm -hmm. uh, but now I, I think uh, most of the companies have their own uh, pre-trained bird models for their own corpus. So um, it actually would be a uh, very uh, a good idea to directly apply BERT to uh, get a better uh, embedding uh, for this case. Oh, okay. Okay. That's good to know. Okay. Um, so I'm, okay, I guess the, uh, my next question, we, we, I'm lit, so you, in the last, you, you use a regression model at the end to yeah. detect price consistent, like, and then, so I guess I, we, uh, we talked about this before, but just for the sake of the audience. So when yeah. you, you basically computed the user regression model com to compute it sort of a suggested price. Right. And then, um, that is sort of a suggestion to, to, to the, to the correction, uh, right. a suggestion for the correction of the catalog. Is, is that how it is, how you imagine or how you design to be used? Right. So, yeah, so actually, um, the price of, uh, Amazon is kind of dynamic. It's not uh, stored in a catalog. So it's basically, uh, we match the prices of other competitors like Walmart. And, um, and in this case, um, because we would like to understand, uh, because this is actually uh, why we studied this problem, because it's a kind of uh, bad customer experience. Mm -hmm. And sometimes customers are busy that uh, they don't calculate uh, very carefully about those unit price. Exactly. And sometimes, <laughs> yeah. So, so, so as they, because they will just, uh, if they want something in bulk and uh, they want to save some money, they maybe just uh, rush to choose the one with the lar largest pack size. And, and maybe afterwards they found out actually they pay more money for the larger pack size. So they will feel frustrated and the bad, uh, have bad customer experience. Mm, okay. So for, yeah, so for this study, we, want, we, we would like to understand how severe the problem is um, on the website. And uh, for the the actual correction part, um, we'll actually uh, use this application uh, as a uh, input signal to inform uh, our downstream actually the the pricing engine to see how how they can uh, mitigate such issues instead of directly change the price to this predicted price because there are still lots of work to do to make sure the price is accurate and uh, yeah it's good for customers. Okay. I see. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, another, I guess, technical question, and I'll, I'll move on to a more general question. So mm -hmm. for the for the name entity rec, uh, so I guess that's a, again that's the part for extracting uh, pack size. Uh, for the name entity recognition task, I'm just curious if it's if you formulate as a in, name entity recognition problem. So how how do you deal with numeric to tokens because they they could be kind of just basically any number. So are they dealt with as different, just different tokens in this case? Yeah. So we basically just, uh, treat, uh, numerical tokens, same as words. So we just, uh, split them as different tokens. And for each one, we run the classifier to determine whether it's pack size or not. Oh, okay. Okay. So I guess the assumption is sort of like it's it's exhaustive is exhaustible like the, the 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 variations so uh so it, it it it's not an arbitrary number so you can exhaustively sort of enumerate all the different variations and still kind of works right right yeah because um for some for some attribute extraction uh we can treat it as a uh, classification task mm -hmm. like uh uh like for uh neckline style so we can see that whether this is a v-neck or a round neck and uh, it's a like limit a set of uh, classes that we can directly apply a text classifier to determine but in our case it's like an arbitrary number of text sizes that it's impossible to train a directly text classifier to tell what would be the correct pack size okay i see gotcha Okay. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, I, I guess I find this overall framework uh, to be very interesting and I'm 
definitely curious about like how this came about. Like I, I'm pretty sure you you uh, went through a lot of trial and error and and derived at this kind of model that that that, that works well in practice. Um, I'm I'm just wondering. Uh, I'm like, could this this framework be? Because you are basically using this to impute um, unit size ver. I guess not impute slash correct uh, unit size information, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm just curious. Like, could you comment on? Uh, could this framework, like, or something similar, be applied to impute other types of data in the catalog? Do you have an uh, yeah. So so actually, uh, each of those part. Um, it is suitable for different kinds of attributes. Uh, for example, this uh, named entity recognition part is uh, is good for extract uh, those attributes for a single product. And um, so, if you think about uh, those sizes or weight or uh, different attributes of single product, you can generally train a uh, either this uh, named entity recognition uh, classifier or a, a Typical standard text classification or image classification uh, model mm -hmm. from the either uh, product title, product description, or product even product image uh, to get a sense of the product attribute to fill such information back into the uh, product catalog. And for the uh, product relationship uh, information, such as uh, the variation relationship, uh, I think it is more suitable to using this kind of uh, uh, IR approach because uh, the catalog is huge and uh, you given a query product, you don't know if you just go a uh, uh, exhaustive uh, search among all the rest of the, the products inside your catalog and train a classifier, binary classifier to determine whether the relationship is positive or negative. Um, it's, it's, it's nearly impossible to do so uh, within a, a reasonable uh, time complexity. So if you can just first treat it as a uh, IR problem to uh, first uh, get a, ha a feel of the candidate uh, uh, candidates uh, out and then just uh, train uh, just uh, infer the relationship on those few candidates it will uh, solve the problem more efficiently Okay, that's interesting. Um, interesting comment. Okay, interesting to think about. Um, okay, I guess that's um, uh, that's all the questions I have. But uh, let me check. A, we have an audience question. Um, so the question coming from Yan Qing, and uh, he, Yan Qing is asking. Um, he has a question about the search engine part. So for example, if the search item is Coke, then the mm. result would be something like Sprite Fanta, which have has different sizes. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay, I, I, I guess, okay, you, you could answer that. Um, I, I guess the answer is no, but, but please elaborate. Uh, yeah, so, so basically uh, I can, briefly explain how the search engine works. So, so it basically leverages the uh, product title and product description and can even include product images. And we fuse all those information into a uh, embedding. And uh, I think it's also a very popular uh, research area in e-commerce that uh, everything now is uh, something to back. So we also have product to back. And after we model each product to back, we just use a very uh, straightforward k nearest neighbor method to extract the products uh, that that are most have the most similar vectors to our query products vector. Uh, so, so in that case, uh, I think uh, if the uh, two products share lots of common words or similar pictures, they will be picked up by our uh, by our model. So if you can tell uh, two kinds of uh, drink that uh, maybe Pepsi and Coke, um, they share lots of words, but just differ by the brand name, they can be also be picked up by our search engine. 
So that's why we need an additional step to extract the size variance. So it's possible to, to return uh, a slightly different kind of drinks, but only differ with uh, some key attributes that we care about. Okay. Um, and that's, that's the question I'm curious about. So, cause you mentioned you were, uh, I'm also curious about the other work, which I will definitely check out. I think your colleagues work uh, on, mm -hmm. on the search engine part, right, but right. in this case, uh, wouldn't like s just strict keyword matching be sufficient? Because uh, I imagine like if, if it's just varying in, like in, if you are looking for a variance that's varying in title and sizes, I, I can't, could kind of uh -huh. imagine like, like keywords would just be enough to, to have a pretty good matching results. Uh, so right. what is the reason for going into like embedding sort of matching? Right. So, so one reason is that uh, we want to try to maximize the recall and uh, because the title of the products is normally um, come up from the, from the seller instead of the e-commerce website. So the, the seller can have different kinds of wording and the ways of spelling the things that even uh, uh, wrong uh, spelling and uh, the order of the, the words that they, they describe the same thing can be a little bit different. So if you just use a uh, very strict uh, keyword matching, then um, you will lose some kind of recall in our case. Okay, okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah. um, so, so, okay, so we mentioned, so if uh, we, we look into your paper, can we look, uh, find the, uh, the, the search engine paper, for, uh, the, sorry, the, the embedding search paper? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. a product uh, reference product search is in the the reference list. Okay, cool, uh, awesome. Um, I think we're almost running out of time, so uh, I'm see not seeing any more audience questions. Um, with that, I would like to thank um, my good friend, uh, uh, Mr. Liu uh, Liu Yang again, for for coming to our uh, live stream and introduce to us a. A uh, very interesting uh, work that is, I think, is very uh, super practical. I definitely learned a lot. Um, thank you very yeah. much, Liu, and thanks to our audience for uh, for tuning in. And um, make sure to check out our uh, future events. We have uh, every week we have a lot of events lined up. You could go to our website and uh, subscribe to those events in your calendar. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Yan, uh, and thank see you, you next time. Yeah, see ya.